Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indizor Education. Um, I would like to start a new chapter called Statics, and in particular, we will talk about equilibrium today. Now, this lecture is part of the um, course called Physics for Teens, um, and uh, it's presented on Unizor.com website. It's a free course, uh, no financial uh, strings are attached, no advertisement. So I do suggest you to go to this website for uh, this lecture and all others because all the lectures are arranged in logical sequence um, because sometimes you can find it just by accident on YouTube but anyway just I, ha I have to tell you that this is part of the course so take the course. And by the way there is a prerequisite course for this which, which is called Mass for Teens and it's also on the same website. Um, in particular, it's very important to uh, have a very good knowledge of vectors and, uh, and calculus to, to really be comfortable in the course of physics. So if you're not that comfortable, I do suggest you to take the Mass for Teens course first and then go to the physics. All right, so let's talk about equilibrium. Um, Statics is, um, I would say, more ancient um, kind of mechanics than dynamics. Dynamics is all about motion. Um, statics is about bridges, buildings, about um, different aspects of life of the people even before they started thinking about what exactly kind of forces are involved in, uh, in, in our everyday life and what kind of quantitative measure of their movements the, we can introduce. So all these uh, Newton's uh, uh, laws, etc., they are all subsequent to this. In the beginning, people had to build buildings and that's probably one of the most important stimulus to think about um, statics. And obviously, in particular, um, they were concerned about equilibrium. So what is equilibrium? Well, equilibrium is a state of all the forces combined together, which result in no movement, basically. So if you have, let's say, one particular object, let's talk about point object, and you have many different forces applied to this, if, as a result of this, uh, the object does not move, we are saying that the forces are balancing each other, and um, all together, this is a state of equilibrium, basically state of rest, so to speak. Now, um, an example, for instance, if, if I'm standing right now on the floor within the... Um, frame reference associated with Earth, let's say, uh, I'm not really moving anywhere, right? So I'm standing still. And why? Because I have two major forces applied to my body, which is my weight, which goes down, and the reaction of the floor, which basically goes back up. And these two forces are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction which means they balance each other. So, obviously, we all understand that the forces um, are vectors because they have magnitude and direction, and the um, combined action of all the forces obeys to the laws of vector algebra. So, if every vector is associated with, a, with every force is associated with a vector, and these vectors of all the forces applied to one particular object sum together giving the null vector that is the condition of equilibrium now another um, uh, condition of equi example of equilibrium is actually the building for instance the building stands now what kind of forces are acting on each brick for instance well there is a pressure from above there is its own its own weight and there is again a reaction from the from the uh, bricks underneath. Um, if you have a bridge, for instance, and there is some weight um, on the top of the bridge, a car, let's say, again the car 
uh, presses down to the bridge with its weight, but the bridge has certain elasticity because it's probably built of steel. Steel has certain elastic elasticity and it actually supports the, the car uh, and it doesn't fall down. So again, the car standing on the bridge is at equilibrium. All right, so we will basically learn about equilibrium by um, uh, considering certain examples, and that's exactly what I would like to do. So, uh, example number one is you have uh, the following construction. So this is the weight of this particular point object and it's hanging on two threads. Now this thread, thread A, is horizontal. Now the thread B is at angle phi. So this is some kind of a knot which ties together all these threads. The thread uh, which leads to the weight the thread to which leads to one support, one wall or whatever, and another one. Now, my question is, um, what kind of tensions of these two threads um, actually can be observed based on the weight of this uh, particular um, object? So there is a tension uh, which goes this way, and the tension which goes this way, this is TA, this is TB, and the combination of three vectors, this one, this one, and this one, should give me a zero vector, null vector. And that's the condition um, of equilibrium, right? So, now this point is not moving. In this and many other cases, we actually can do uh, this not moving condition, we can express it in different ways as, as equations, equality of the forces. So what I'm going to do is, first I'm going to project all my forces to a horizontal line. Now, this force on the horizontal line has no projection because it's perpendicular, right? So the weight doesn't really contribute to movements left or right. Now the force TA therefore must be balanced by projection of TB on the horizontal line. TA is already completely horizontal, right? So TA is the magnitude of the vector which goes to the left. Magnitude. TA is not, in this case, now, if I will put the line on the top, that would be a vector. But this is just the magnitude of the vector. So magnitude of this vector should be equal to the magnitude of projection of the TB. And the projection of TB is TB times cosine of phi. So this is a result of this particular point not moving horizontally. It's also not moving vertically. So what are projections of all my vectors onto the vertical um, my line? Now this is zero, so TA does not contribute to any um, vertical movement since it's a horizontal vector. Now this is definitely down and this is up and the up would be now this is also phi, so this is TB times sine of phi is equal to w. Again, w in this case is not a vector, it's a magnitude of the vector. This is a vector. Now, these are two uh, equations with, with two unknowns, tb and ta, which I can find. And knowing the magnitude of these vectors and knowing their direction, basically I have solved the problem, right? All right, so how can I solve? Well, obviously I can find TB from here. TB is equal to W divided by sine of phi. And now I can find TA 
which is Tb times cosine, which is W cosine divided by sine phi, or if you wish, cotangents of phi. So, this is, this is it. Now, the problem is uh, solved. Now, let's consider another problem. Um, so, I would like to use these examples to basically illustrate what the equilibrium is and how uh, conditions of equilibrium can be basically um, calculated. Now, in this case, I have an inclined plane with big object here with the thread goes around the pulley down and the smaller object here and I know that masses uh, I, I know masses but I have to find out is what is the angle when these are uh, uh, balance each other so this is a state of equilibrium this is given to me masses are given question is what's the angle okay now um, let's just do exactly the same thing as before now this force is always going down and this is mg now this force also down this is capital mg but in this case it's very convenient to uh, break it into two components one component goes down perpendicularly to the plane and it's very important because there is a reaction of the plane which is equal to uh, in, in magnitude uh, let me just make it really equal something like this So this is mg times sine phi, right? This is phi and this is phi. Now, and this one, no, this is cosine, I'm sorry. This is mg cosine phi. And this is mg sine phi. So the mg cosine phi is completely balanced by reaction of the force and this um, um, force which is mg sine phi since we are in balance in equilibrium is completely balanced by tension so mg sine phi is equal to tension on the same hand the tension is balancing this force it's the same tension this is the same thread the same tension obviously we assume that there are no friction etc and this is ideal pulley, all ideal uh, conditions obviously from which we can very easily find sine phi is equal to M over capital M and phi is equal to arc sine M over capital M. That's it. We found the angle where everything is in balance. If this angle will be greater, then the, ca the, the bigger mass would just pull to the left. If the angle is smaller, there is no friction, right? Now, this smaller um, mass would uh, go down and if we are in equilibrium this is the condition of equilibrium right so basically these are a couple of very simple um, examples of the state of equilibrium a state of rest when all the forces acting onto the same object are nullifying each other so basically if you have a bunch of forces fi where i is 1, 2, etc., n. So you have n forces applied to the same 
point object. So we're talking about point object and all the forces. It's at rest if sum of all these vectors is equal to null vector. So that's the condition of equilibrium and these are a couple of examples which kind of illustrate it. Okay, that's it. Um, I would suggest you to read the notes for this lecture, every lecture for this and every other course which is on the unisor.com. It has notes, it also has exams, so I do suggest you to go through the website to have a complete course at your disposal. That's it. Thank you very much and good luck.